Hi everyone, it's Professor Primpton. In this video we're going to talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. So we're going to talk about what is the slope of a parallel or perpendicular line and how do you obtain the equation of a parallel or perpendicular line to a given line. So we're going to start off with an application. According to data in recent years, the future of the United States indicates that the number of men and women living alone will increase each year, and there are several factors for that. The following graph provides the number of adult men and women given in millions that are living alone in the United States between 1990 and 2008. So if you look at the graph, the graph that is magenta or red is representing United States women living alone, aged 18 or older, and these are in millions from 1990 to 2008, and the one that's in a dark green or blue is the number of men living alone. So the question is, according to the graph, which appears to have the greater slope? So based on our discussion in the previous videos, which one appears to be the, the greater slope? Well, it depends on the steepness of the graph. Well, if you look at the number of men living alone, it appears to be a slight steeper line than compared to the line representing women living alone. So that means the slope representing the number of U.S. men living alone is greater since its line is slightly steeper. So the reason why it appears to be slightly steeper is that we can calculate what's called the average rate of change, or slope. We can calculate the slope of the number of women living alone, aged 18 or older, between 1990 and 2008. We can calculate the slope, the measure of how steep the line is, and we can calculate the slope representing the number of men living alone, and we can compare the two numbers. But by just looking at the graph, it appears that the line that's representing the men living alone is a little bit steeper. So we're going to save this application for the next video. So the rest of this video we're going to focus on slope and how does it compare with parallel and perpendicular lines. So let's start with parallel lines. The definition of parallel lines is that you have two non-intersecting lines. So that means the two lines do not intersect. They lie in the same plane and they're parallel if they do not intersect. So two lines that do not intersect their ratio of whether they vertically change and horizontally change has to be the same if they're never going to intersect. So here's a definition of parallel lines in terms of slope. If you have two non-vertical lines, they must be parallel if they have the same slope. Or vice versa. If you have two non-vertical lines with the same slope, then they must be parallel. And on the other hand, in the special case, if you have two vertical lines that have undefined slopes, then they are also parallel. So let's look at example one. This is going to combine what we've learned in the last couple videos with what we've just learned about parallel lines and their slope. So example one says, write an equation of a line passing through the point negative two, negative seven, and is parallel to the line whose equation is y equals negative 5x plus 4. And this time they want us to write the equation in both point slope form and slope intercept form. So let's see what we're given. We are given a point, negative 2, negative 7, on a line. we need to find the equation for. So how do you compare that line that we're trying to find with the line that we are given? Well, y equals negative 5x plus 4. This is in slope intercept form. It's already been solved for y. And notice that the number in front of the x is the slope. So the slope must be negative 5 for this line. 
Well, we just found out that if the lines are parallel, they have the same slope. So the line that we are trying to find will also have slope negative 5. So m is negative 5. And we also have a point that the, the line we are trying to find passes through. It has to pass through negative 2, negative 7. So notice that we have the slope of the line we need to find and also a point on the line. So we can use point slope form. Okay, and again, if you're using a formula, write it down first. That's a good habit to get into. So y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. We're going to use the point as the x1, y1, and the slope is negative 5. So y minus negative 7 equals the slope times x minus negative 2. Simplify the signs first. So y subtract negative 7 becomes y plus 7 equals negative 5 times x plus 2. And we know if we want to get point slope form, you need to subtract 7 to the right side of the equation. So you'll have y equals negative 5 times x plus 2 subtract 7, and this was called point slope form. Okay, so we're halfway through the answer because we need to find point slope form and also slope intercept form. So now remember from the previous video, if you simplify point slope form, you will find automatically slope intercept form. So we just need to keep going. y equals negative 5 times x plus 2 subtract 7. If we want to simplify, distribute the negative 5 through the set of parentheses to both terms. So y equals negative 5x subtract 10 subtract 7 which becomes y equals negative 5x subtract 17. And this is slope intercept form. Or y equals mx plus b. So let's see what we've actually found. We were given an equation of one line and the slope was negative 5. We had a point that the line we needed to find had to pass through. It must pass through negative 2, negative 7. And we know the two lines are parallel, so we found the slope of the new line, where the slope of the line we are, are wanting to find is negative 5. And then we use point-slope form using the point and the slope, and we simplify point-slope form to get slope-intercept form. So this line has slope negative 5, and the other line had slope negative 5. This crosses the y-axis at negative 17, the other line will cross the y-axis at 4. So they will be non-intersecting lines because they have the same slope. Okay, let's try example two. This is going to work very similarly as example one. This time it says write an equation of a line that passes through three common negative four and again is parallel to a line whose equation is three x attract y minus five equals zero. So notice that's in general form this time. And then express the equation of a line in both point slope form and slope intercept form. So this time we are given a point, 3, negative 4, on a line, and we need to find the equation parallel to 3x subtract y subtract 5 equals 0. So that's what we're trying to do in this second example. So let's start off with the equation. We can't say the slope is 3 because the equation is not in slope-intercept form. We have to take this equation and solve for y first. So take 3x subtract y subtract 5 equals 0. Solve for y to find slope-intercept form. So to do that, you could just simply add y to the right side of the equation and you'll have y by itself. Or you could also subtract a 3x and add 5, but then you're going to have to divide by negative 1. I'm going to add y because it's much easier that way. So y is equal to 3x subtract 5. 
And so notice that the slope is now 3 because this is in slope-intercept form. Alright, so if the slope is 3 and the lines are parallel again, then the line that we are trying to find will also have a slope of 3. So again, remember that parallel lines have the same slope. So we have a point, which is 3 common negative 4, that's on the line we are trying to find, and we also know the slope must be 3. So let's use point slope form. y subtract y1 equals slope times x minus x1. It'll be y subtract y1 is negative 4 equals slope, which is 3, times x subtract 3. So make sure you simplify your signs first. y plus 4 equals 3 times x minus 3. And now subtract 4 on both sides of the equation. And you'll have y equals 3 times x minus 3 subtract 4, and this is point-slope form. So there's half the answer. We have found the equation of the line that is in point-slope form, but now we also need to find slope-intercept form again. So again, if you take the equation and continue simplifying by distributing the 3 through the set of parentheses to both terms x and negative 3, you'll have y equals 3x subtract 9 subtract 4, which becomes y equals 3x subtract 13. And this is slope-intercept form of the equation of the line we were trying to find. That passes through 3, negative 4, and is also parallel to 3x minus y minus 5 equals 0. So in example one, we were given the equation and we can identify what the slope is by just looking at the equation because it was already in slope-intercept form. This example, the equation was not in slope-intercept form, so we had to do that extra step. We had to make sure it was in slope-intercept form first so we could find the slope and then find out that the line we wanted to find also has a slope of three. All right, this time we're going to focus now on slope and how does it relate with perpendicular lines. Well, remember that two lines that do intersect at a right angle or 90 degree angle are called perpendicular lines. So there's a relationship between the slopes of perpendicular lines as well, but it's just not as obvious as it is with parallel lines. So in this graph, notice that these two lines are perpendicular to each other because they form a right angle. That's what this little box represents. The slope of this blue line, this line that's increasing from left to right, it is rising C units and it has a run of D units, or the horizontal change is D. So its slope is C divided by D. Whereas the slope of this magenta line or pink line, it's decreasing from left to right. It's going to the left C units, so that's negative C for the run, and it's rising D units. So its slope is the opposite of D divided by C. So notice that the slope of AB is C divided by D, but the slope of A prime, B prime, this line, is the opposite of D divided by C. So how do these two relate to each other? Well, they are opposite reciprocals of one another. So for example, if the slope of line AB is 3, then the, then the perpendicular line A prime B prime is slope negative 1 divided by 3. So you take the reciprocal, so the reciprocal of 3 is 1 divided by 3, and then it's the opposite sign as well. So it's opposite reciprocal slopes. 
So what does it mean to be opposite reciprocal? Well, if you take two numbers or two fractions that are opposite reciprocals of one another and you multiply them together, you should get negative 1. You'll have c divided by c, that's 1. d divided by d, that's 1, but then you'll have a negative. So you'll have negative 1 if you multiply two opposite reciprocal slopes together. So the relationship, again, between perpendicular lines is that the slopes are opposite reciprocals of one another. So the definition of perpendicular lines and slope. Two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if you multiply the slopes and you get negative 1. So we just saw that. If the product of the slopes are negative 1, then that means the lines must be perpendicular. So that just says the opposite direction is also true. And then if you have a horizontal line that has zero slope, a perpendicular line would be a vertical line to a horizontal line, and it has undefined slope. So let's try example 3. So example 3 says, find the slope of a line that is perpendicular to the line who has this equation, x plus 3y subtract 12 equals 0. So we're not trying to find the equation of the line that's perpendicular. They're asking for just the slope. So let's approach this just like we did in the previous example. Let's take this equation and notice that it is in general form. It's not slope-intercept form. So we need to solve the equation for y to find slope-intercept form. Okay? In other words, we can't say the slope is 1, the number in front of the x, unless you have y isolated first. So let's do that. Let's take the equation and let's isolate the y. So let's subtract x to the right side of the equation and also add 12 to the right side. So 3y is equal to the opposite of x when you subtract it and then add 12. And now divide both sides of the equation by 3 and you'll find it's y equals um, negative 1 divided by 3x plus 12 divided by 3, which will simplify to y equals negative 1 third x plus 4. Now that's the equation that we were given. It's just in slope-intercept form now. So what's the slope of this line? Well, it's the coefficient in front of the x. So the slope is negative 1 third. And we just found out that perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So the perpendicular line that we are trying to find will have a slope that is the opposite and reciprocal of the other line, which has a slope of negative one-third. So the reciprocal of one-third is 3 divided by 1, or just 3, and it's the opposite sign. So if this one's negative, the other line will be positive. So it's positive 3. All right, so let's finish up this video with example 4. This time it's going to be very similar to example 2, except instead of parallel lines, we'll have perpendicular lines. So write an equation of a line that passes through negative 2, negative 6, and is perpendicular to the line who has an equation x plus 4y subtract 8 equals 0. And again, write the equation in both point-slope and slope-intercept forms. So this problem is similar to example 2. except that the two lines are perpendicular. And we need to find an equation perpendicular to 
to x plus 4y, subtract 8 equals 0. And passes through. the point negative 2, negative 6. Okay, so let's approach this just like we did example 2. Take the equation x plus 4y subtract 8 equals 0 that we are given and try to determine what's the slope. Well, notice that it's in general form again, not slope intercept. So solve for y to find slope intercept form. or y equals mx plus b. So that means we need to subtract x to the right side of the equation and also add 8 first. So 4y is equal to the opposite of x when you subtract x, plus 8 when you add 8. Now divide both sides of the equation by 4. So you'll get y by itself. So you'll have negative 1 divided by 4x, and then 8 divided by 4 which of course will simplify again to be negative one-fourth x plus two. So this is slope-intercept form. And now what's important is we are trying to find the slope. Well, the slope is negative one-fourth, the coefficient in front of the x. So now we are trying to find the perpendicular line to y equals negative one-fourth x plus two. The example two, we were trying to find parallel line. So notice that perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So it means take the reciprocal and also change the sign. So it will have slope. Well, the reciprocal of one divided by four is four divided by one and it will become positive. So positive four, and the line must pass through negative two, negative six. So we can use point slope form again, because we know a point, and now we know what the slope is. So y subtract y1 equals slope times x minus x1. y subtract negative six is equal to the slope of the perpendicular line is four, times x subtract x1, which is negative 2. And so again, let's simplify. Change the signs. y plus 6 is equal to 4 times x plus 2. And subtract 6 to both sides of the equation to make sure you have y isolated. So y is equal to 4 times x plus 2. And then subtract 6. So that is point-slope form. So just like examples one and two, we need to simplify completely to find slope-intercept form. So take the equation, y equals four times x plus two minus six. Distribute the four through the parentheses. y equals four x plus eight, subtract so six, and then combine any like terms. So you have y equals four x plus two, and this is now in slope-intercept form for the equation of the line. So this line is slope 4, and the other line had a slope of negative 1 fourth. So we know they are perpendicular, and the line y equals 4x plus 2, it does pass through the point negative 2, negative 6. So this gives you an idea of how to use parallel and perpendicular to compare the slopes and also find the equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework in terms of parallel or perpendicular lines, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about average rate of change of a function.